I'm Rantasmo, and Hocus Pocus needs more gay. Who doesn't love Halloween? It's the one night a year where you can get away with dressing up like a sexy Mario if you're a guy, or a sexy Princess Peach if you're a guy. And who doesn't love Hocus Pocus? No other movie has so fully encapsulated just how Halloween felt to me as a child. Dark, fun, and silly, with just the tiniest hint of actual danger. So what's gay about Hocus Pocus? Well, it's a cult classic for many people, but I find it especially nostalgic for women and gay men. You should know by now that it's been a holiday tradition of mine since, well, ever since it came out. And perhaps the gayest thing about it are its three female leads. Sarah Jessica Parker is best known for starring in a show where women act like stereotypical gay men. Kathy Najimy is a longtime outspoken gay rights activist. And Bette Midler is Bette Midler. The three of them are really the reason that anyone ever watches Hocus Pocus, because clearly they're the ones having the most fun. What a pretty spider! <laughs> but even for the early 90s, it's kind of amazing that this movie was even made, and made by Disney. This is a movie that contains the on-screen death of a child, the disturbingly graphic death and subsequent reanimation of a talking cat, human immolation, references to witchcraft, cannibalism, and devil worship, at least 30 references to virginity and how terrible it is, and a brief celebration of yabos. Max likes your yabos. In fact, he loves them. Last time I tried to recap this movie, it didn't go quite as planned, although it did turn out to be shockingly popular in Saudi Arabia. But it's time for me to, at long last, finally review Ho Hocus Pocus. We open up in Salem, Massachusetts in 1693, where young Thackeray Binks sets out to rescue his kid sister Emily from the fabulously wicked Sanderson witches, who are named Mary, Sarah, and Winifred, also known as Dumb, Dumber, and Teeth. Thackeray fails spectacularly. The witches drain Emily's life force and turn Thackeray into an immortal cat. An angry Puritan mob, complete with torches, hangs the witches, like you do, but not before they prophesize a virgin one day bringing them back from the dead. 300 years later, the early 90s are in full swing. Tie-dye is in! Thora Birch is adorable! These haircuts exist! And our protagonist, Max, has the hots for his Mega Fox classmate, Allison. Allison sneaks Max and his sister, Danny, into the Sanderson sisters' old house, which is now a museum of sorts. And Max finds the Black Flame Candle, which is rumored to summon the witches when lit by a virgin on Halloween night. Max, determined to impress his love interest, proceeds to f sh up and formally announces his virginity by lighting the candle, resurrecting the witches. Fortunately, Max rolls a nat 20 on his bluff check and gets away with the witch's spell book and binks the talking cat in tow. Nice going, Max. The witches need the spell book so that they can brew their life-draining potion and continue living beyond just Halloween night, so they give chase. They can't set foot on hallowed ground, so Max and company naturally seek refuge in a cemetery. But Bette Midler sicks her reanimated ex-boyfriend Billy on them. Billy is delightful. Catch those children! Get up! Get up! Get out of that ditch! Meanwhile, the witches hitch a ride on a bus, and Sarah kind of hits on the bus driver, and Winnie's like, slow. And then... Oh, God, this part. Binks, look out! Whoa, speed bump! Oh, my God. I hate it when that happens. So now that child viewers have had their innocence demolished, the witches discover trick-or-treaters, and we discover their greatest weakness. Costumes. <laughs> yes, the sisters mistake Gary Marshall for Satan himself, which admittedly is sometimes an easy mistake to make. I want you to meet the little woman. He has a little woman. The little woman turns out to be Penny Marshall. Anyway, Sarah gets a little too friendly with Satan, and Penny Marshall's like, slow. So they get kicked out to the curb. 
They follow Max and friends to a Halloween party in full swing. Bette Midler sees the band and is like, bitch please, and ends up schooling everyone in the art of song. I put a spell on you, and now you're gone. The song has the side effect of making everyone who hears it dance forever. But the kids once again manage to escape. I have an idea. Let's commit murder. The kids pull a modern day Hansel and Gretel, luring the witches into a giant kiln and straight up incinerating them to death. <laughs> Guys, you just actively killed three people. I mean, yeah, victory and all, but is this really an appropriate time for cartwheels? I wonder if this is what SEAL Team 6 did. Well, it's a moot point because the witches aren't dead after all. Max and Allison once again f up by opening the book, signaling the witches straight to their location, and allowing them to kidnap both Danny and Binks. Fortunately, Max rolls another nat 20 on his bluff check and rescues both of them, leaving the witches with just enough potion for one child. Winnie decides to chase down Thora Birch and use it on her purely out of spite and plot necessity. This puts our protagonists on the defensive, and they hunker down in the graveyard armed with salt, baseball bats, and Billy the Zombie, who has decided not to be evil. Bet gets a hold of Thora but drops the potion, which Max drinks because Max is a goddamn idiot. Fortunately, the ensuing struggle gives the sun just enough time to be like, what up, I'm the sun, and the witches to be like, Oh, and also Thackeray's like a Star Wars ghost now. The end. I don't think my silly stick figures can really express just how perfect this movie is. Maybe not so perfect if you're watching it for the first time as an adult. Yes, I'm viewing it with nostalgia goggles, but I think the fact that it stayed with me for so long shows just how great of a kid's movie it is. And I like that they snuck in some adult elements while still keeping it goofy and fun. So if you don't already have plans this Halloween, why not rewatch the best and gayest Halloween movie ever? Or at least reenact it in your bedroom. I put a spell on you. And now you're mine.